Hi everyone and welcome to the image critique for the April 6th assignment. Um, it looks like we pretty much got everything in. <clears throat> um, we're going to go through these uh, one at a time. Sean, we'll start with you since uh, there's only one image that's loose in here and I don't want to miss it. Um, so first of all, a couple of you kind of missed the um, apparently maybe didn't watch the video closely enough there were, were supposed to be three images one with, which illustrated color contrast one il illustrating color harmony and one illustrating a dominant color and some of you uh, only did one or two of those uh, with that being said I really do like this image uh, let me read his uh, description of it he said, I saw my guitar as I was playing in the bright color of the blue stained mahogany and the contrast between the black, blue, cream, and chrome caught my eye. The smooth, glassy finish puts the focus only on the colors and reflections of the subject, which is pur purposely nothing in particular. So it, that is a good point. The, uh, the glassy finish does definitely put the focus on the color and the reflections. It's an interesting angle, an unusual one for photographing a subject like this uh, i i think i like the point of focus being near the back on this letting that front edge uh, even go out of focus and becoming just the band of color so you've got good color contrast in this one the yellow and the blue are, are good contrasting colors uh, and it's a good composition um, would like to have seen a couple of more images but like I said with that being said this one was still uh, a pretty good image overall uh, Sierra I did not get uh, any text with these but I will tell you that uh, from what I can see that they they did uh, match the assignment so this would obviously be the color contrast with the um, sort of reds and greens uh, again, it was as was mentioned in the um, instructional video, the reds and greens are being pretty much opposite on the color wheel uh, are good uh, areas of color contrast. Not an overly exciting image overall, but it does definitely uh, fit the, uh, the description. This um, is more of the, the single dominant color. looks like it was lit with some type of a colored light or gel. Um, again, so I'm going to, uh, we, we haven't really talked a ton about, um, portrait photography and, and even though this, maybe it doesn't qualify as a straight portrait because it's a little more, uh, uh, off the beaten path than that. You do want to be careful about the placement of light when you're photographing someone. You can see in the reflection of her eye that that light source is below her nose and what that does is it cause uh, it tends to cause shadows uh, upwards and also it lights the bottom of the nose uh, and the bottom of the chin and, and so forth which is not necessarily when shadows go up on the face it's t typically not a flattering look again it's not a straightforward portrait so we have a little bit of leeway here but I just want to point that out to you that typically a light source or your main light source when there's a, photo, a photograph of a person should be above the nose and that highlight should be in the upper half of the eye rather than the lower half. Again, I recognize that this was done uh, for a different purpose and it was intended to be a little bit, um, uh, a little bit different. So I'm not going to, you know, overly criticize. I just want to make you aware. And then finally, this image uh, which would fit the bill, I would say, for color harmony. There's really only one dominant color here. It's all they're all brown tones. Even the white wall, which is neutral, doesn't uh, play into that. And um, there's some shadows cast on the wall from this, which are a little bit um, a little bit disconcerting because they go in in opposite directions, meaning there's more than one light source hitting this but they're not strong enough to compete with the subject so again that's not necessarily a bad thing so all three images definitely matched the assignment uh, for Donna uh, the first thing she mentions is that 
she um, has purchased Photoshop uh, since she'd already used her seven day subscription. And let's see, yeah, because she was using a different software last week. So anyway, her color harmony is the picture of the dog. And she's correct. She says, I chose this picture because I thought that the different shades of brown complemented each other. It's a lighter shade of brown on the cushion, darker shade of brown on the back of the seat. Uh, and our dog has various shades of brown on her. Absolutely right. Uh, the color... Um, uh, color harmony in this is 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 a pretty good and it's good to recognize it in a very sort of an everyday subject like this uh, I would make one suggestion first of all give that dog a treat uh, he looks like he's about to bite your hand off or she um, um, I would have probably moved the camera position just a little to the right and try to eliminate this part of the um, the arm that you see here. If you can envision it without that, uh, in fact, let's open it up and, and do that. Um, oh, I did not have Photoshop running, so give me a second. Okay, so... Oh boy, my... Um, windows are way out of kilter on this let's see if i can get them back because i'm i'm shooting this in, or i'm doing this in a very different um resolution than i normally do well that'll get us there anyway um let's go into crop mode and just oops sorry let's go this way take a little bit let's try to take all of that out even though that places the dog a little further to the right than i would like but it's just a little it's a small thing but it's a little bit of a distraction that little area that little arm on the right so whoops sorry uh, i think that it's probably a little bit stronger without but overall color wise uh, good job on that let me go back into photoshop and close that image i think it's still open yes Okay, and then finally, uh, the one color photo is uh, what she thought was a unique picture. It was taken on our bottom porch looking up at the top deck. The deck is a blue-gray shade, and the sunlight was coming through the decking, creating the lines. It also shows all of the wood imperfections, like the knot in the wood and the lines throughout. So a great subject choice for, uh, for this, not only for the color aspect, but a very graphical aspect as well. I probably would like to have seen, if I'm going to make any uh, comment on this at all, I probably would like to have seen this uh, tilted a little bit. And let's, uh, let me pull this out. i turn my snapping on. There we go. And just see what happens if we give this, probably going to have to go this way. You do lose a little bit. Uh, of the image but now we've got a little more of a dynamic composition because we've got diagonal lines now this is really a matter of taste because you still have diagonal lines in the sunlit areas and then you've got horizontal lines and everything else and you could make a case for saying that um, you know the two play off of each other really well and they do um, I just think for me, I'm just, you know, talking about myself, I probably would gravitate a little more towards uh, that image than this one. But overall, it was a great job of recognizing uh, not only the color, but uh, of getting a really unique uh, composition from, uh, from what you had. So all three, oops, we skipped this one. Um, this would be color contrast. There's no description for this, I don't believe. But yeah, that's uh, that's color contrast. That's a, an interesting um, take on it. So just so you know, so this was an would have been a pretty easy photograph to take, I think. But imagine this if you had actually taken those M and M's and laid them out in neat little rows, and like I suggested on the um, the last shot of the deck, uh, tilting that so that they were you know diagonal rows and maybe 
they're all red except for one green or one yellow one in there or something. That would have been a really dramatic photo. Uh, great subject choice um, for color contrast, but uh, always try to keep thinking a little bit different. I think you did a great job overall, um, but that would have been cool to see something like that on the M&Ms. Erica says, I got a little bit carried away with this assignment, so you can choose whatever pictures you want to show. Well, we'll run through all of them here quickly. I have some of each color combination you asked for, starting with the pictures of the alcohol. Uh, and yeah, the alcohol is no problem. Trust me, we're not uh, we're not going to censor anything in this class. Um, I was just having some fun with it. My sister was drinking the reds while we were sitting in the grass, and the contrast just stood out to me. Uh, the two different cans fit color contrast and color harmony. I think the one of my niece and the little blue flowers fit color harmony, and then the yellow flowers is the single color composition. Uh, and you could probably make a case for the little blue flowers because it has more green tones than anything. And she added a few others in there. She was having fun with the beautiful days we were having this past week. So let's take a look uh, a little bit closer in. Yes, definitely a little bit of color contrast there. Uh, the leaf isn't necessarily all the way into the red family, but there's still enough of a difference uh, to have made that an impact green and yellow again so uh, same kind of an idea and the composition being a little bit off center uh, I probably would have because this the top part of this is so out of focus um, I'm gonna open this up I probably would have cropped this down a little bit just to give it a little more impact I think anyway um, and then who knows maybe you know we would have thrown um, of course my actions are probably not gonna work on yours because the resolution will be different. Um, but a little vignette or something like that, a little border around the edges would have given it a really interesting framing effect. But um, again, not going to knock it for what it is. It, it does fit the color uh, that we were looking for. Red against the green. Uh, I think the exposure is a little hot here. I think maybe a little darker on that might have been... Um, uh, a little better exposure for the grass, but the color harmony or the color contrast rather comes out pretty strong. So this is the one that also has the color contrast with the reds and the greens. Uh, good macro close-up image of both the can and the grass. And then this one's a little more a little more harmonious because we've got the yellows and the greens, which are closer, but then the blue contrasts with the yellow. This is definitely a little more color harmony throughout. Um, so typically, so you know, this any shade of green is not typically a good color to photograph uh, a person with because uh, it tends to uh, pick up that color and um, give a little bit of a color cast to the skin that's not, you know, green on skin is not necessarily... Um, attractive. It doesn't really affect it in this case. It doesn't really harm it, I don't think. Um, I, and I, I just, I do think you were right in recognizing the color harmony in this, uh, though, so I'm not going to knock that one at all. This one is the, uh, the blue and the green flowers, and then finally the yellow, <coughs> excuse me, pretty much solid color uh, image. So all of those uh, you know, they, they definitely covered what we were looking for and, uh, and then a few more thrown in on top of that. So good job, Erica. Uh, Michaela, again, we only have the one type of image. There's not uh, multiple images here. So all we really have is color contrast a little bit. Uh, we'll go through these one at a time. Just different variations. That's probably the stronger composition. The one thing I noticed when I looked at these is that the, the image is a little noisy. So I went into uh, the metadata to see, and sure enough, the ISO is up to 6400, which is a little high. Actually, it's a lot high for an image like this because the shutter speed was a four thousandth of a second. And if you scroll down and look at the lens used, um, it was an 18 to 55 millimeter lens set at 55. 
So that image could have easily been handheld at a much, much slower shutter speed and a much lower ISO, unless the effect you were going for was, um, you know, the, the little more of a noise grain image. But what would have happened if you had knocked the ISO and shutter speed down is that I think overall this would have been a little sharper image. All four of these are just a little bit off on sharpness. And part of that is probably due to the uh, the distance between the camera and the subject. It might have exceeded the minimum distance. Um, but the ISO might have solved a little bit of that issue as well. Uh, Monica says, I tried to find subjects and settings to illustrate the color concepts. Uh, she mentioned that when she talked to IT at school last week that they have contacted Adobe but that there's a backlog of requests to be processed. They recommended to download the free trial, but she hasn't heard anything from them since. I hope they get that straightened around um, before too long so that you guys can take uh, advantage of it. So here's our color contrast. Cute image of this uh, fuzzy, not sure what it is. It looks like... Um, <laughs> stuffed fruit of some kind, a strawberry, I don't know, uh, stuck into these uh, these green reeds of uh, grass. So good job on the color harmony. The composition looks like it's been cropped to eliminate some distractions, so I like that. Um, again, this is a really good job of recognizing the color harmony. And, and um, finally, this one would be, I guess, more of a dominant color. It looks like it's been filtered somehow to create that effect. Sort of looks like a little bit seen from the Matrix or something. Uh, but this one I really, really like. I, I Like I said, I, I think I enjoy um, the fact that you recognized how, even though these are all slightly different colors, uh, they're pretty much all in the same family. So they uh, they fit the bill for color harmony. Um, Skylar has three images. Uh, the first one is the dominant color, which is pretty much all green. I'm not sure exactly what I'm looking at here. I mean, other than the uh, some type of, um, I don't know if it's a floral, or it's not floral, but some type of an arrangement in a, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really sure um, what we've got as far as subject matter here, but it is mostly green. So um, at a glance, when you back it out, especially when you look at the thumbnail, you can see that. This would be the color contrast. It's the tan against the blue, uh, which this is in the yellow, uh, yellow family, so it does contrast against the blue. The composition is a little um, interesting being this close up. Um, Again, eliminating pretty much any kind of distraction uh, and reducing the, um, the subject to color and shape as opposed to what it actually is. And then the last one is just in color harmony um, throughout. I probably would have cropped this just a little tighter. Uh, I know you have cropped it somewhat, but this, I don't know if we can get it down far enough to get this little piece out of the top and then the little reflection on the side, we're going to lose the cat's back paw if we take that all out. So probably can't get it all with cropping, but that does help, I believe. Yeah, just a little bit. Definitely got all three phases of the assignment, though. And then Zach. So we only have two images here, um, but you can kind of make a case for the fact that they they um, they satisfy all three. This could be color harmony and single dominant color both uh, in one. It's an interesting thought process to use a burning log like this or uh, you know the embers in a fire as a color subject, but it works really well. It's also a fun subject to photograph. Fire is always fun. Maybe I'm just a little bit of a pyromaniac at heart. I don't know. Um, but it's always fun to work with fire because you got a constantly changing pattern of light uh, and subject and form. So this one, I really like to have an explanation of why there's a DHL delivery shirt hanging on a tree, um, but it definitely is the co the contrast and the color. The reds against the um, the blue, which is really the ultraviolet light, which is reflecting uh, from that snow. Um, 
you know there's a little bit of green in there as well in the foliage in the background so you've got um, you know you've basically got your three primary colors there red green and blue which is kind of cool but I really want to know why there was no text with this uh, I really want to know why that shirt is hanging there other than you you recognize that you needed something red in there to complete that um, but there's got to be a story here <laughs> alright so anyway guys as I mentioned in the instructional instructional video we will have a zoom class coming up in two weeks uh, that will be for the review of all the material that will be on the test and um, so until then just sit tight and work on your assignments for next week which were which was given out at the end of uh, the video that was posted today if you have any questions give me a call give me a text shoot me an email something like that we'll take care of it